Russia announced on Wednesday it was abandoning Kherson and its surrounds for a more defensible position on the opposite bank of the Dnipro River. But before we continue, can I ask you to drop a like, subscribe and of course leave a comment. What do you think the Russians are doing? In a highly staged video released by the Russian Defense Ministry, the overall commander of forces in Ukraine, Sergei Surovikin, told Defense Minister Sergei Shugu, after a comprehensive assessment of the current situation, we suggest taking defense along the left shore, east bank, of the Dnipro River. Understand, this is not an easy decision, but at the same time, we will preserve the lives of our servicemen, and in general the combat readiness of the group of forces. Shugu replies, Sergei Vladimirovich, I agree with your conclusions and suggestions. For us, the lives of Russian servicemen are always a priority. The battle for Kherson region may be pivotal to the war, and Surovikin has always said that he did not want it to take place, in a limited area. The video between the two was highly scripted to counter widespread reports that thousands of newly mobilized troops were being sent to the meat grinder, under-trained and under-equipped. They are of course naive to believe that a video like this would change many decades of proven Russian neglect when it comes to their men. But then again, this video was probably designed for the men themselves rather than anyone with half a brain cell living in the West. In a similar video the Kremlin released on October 28th. Shugu told Russian President Vladimir Putin during a visit to a training facility, we pay special and separate attention to training because it is necessary to send the prepared, trained, equipped. Absolutely, this is how it should be done, replied Putin. Russian forces have been withdrawing men and equipment from the west, or right, bank of the Dnieper for weeks and this was finally completed, according to them on Friday the 11th of November 2022. They have also said that 60,000 teachers, doctors and other professionals were evacuated, an effort Russian President Vladimir Putin endorsed, saying, the civilian population should not suffer. Of course, this just forms part of a larger strategy of picking Ukraine clean as they retreat. There are reports of children's playgrounds having toys and structures removed, all to be shipped back to Mother Russia. The biggest issue with this retreat is that it doesn't play into Putin's narrative. Everything about this is bad press for him and the security of his position as head of Russia. So why are they doing it? Here are some ideas. It's a trap. This is the option that is most worrying to the Ukrainian high command, and they are preparing accordingly. A Russian publication even quoted a document it said contained instructions from the Kremlin to Russian mass media on how to explain the retreat. The evacuation of peaceful civilians of the city of Kherson to the Dnieper's left bank is triggered by the danger of a massive strike on the city delivered by a huge group of Ukrainian nationalists, the instruction allegedly said. That is a statement worth unpicking. Is this the pretext for a dirty bomb? First they set up the fact that Ukraine was planning one, then they withdrew and now they are speaking of another massive strike on the city. Another interesting take on the trap possibility come from Ukrainian military expert Olzdanov believes the retreat is nothing but a trap to lure Ukrainian forces in and inflict massive losses on them. He claimed that Russian forces disguised as civilians are holed up in Kherson's residential areas to shoot at Ukrainian servicemen. On camera, it will look like alleged civilians resisting the Ukrainian army, he said in televised remarks on Thursday. This would have massive propaganda appeal. Top Ukrainian officials are understandably wary. Until the Ukrainian flag hovers over Kherson, it makes no sense to talk about the withdrawal of Russian troops, presidential aide Mikhaila Podolyak said in televised remarks on Wednesday. Before the retreat announcement, Russian-appointed officials had for weeks been urging tens of thousands of civilians to leave the city, and destroyed hundreds of boats of all sizes on both banks. As Ukrainian forces approach the city we will get a better understanding of what happens next. Whilst it could in fact all be a trap, this could also shrewd political gameplay from Putin. A democratic-controlled Congress has approved $65.9 billion in military and financial aid to Ukraine, that has had an undeniably positive effect on the war for the home side. However it would appear that a Republican-controlled Congress could make it much harder for the flow of aid to continue as was proven on the 30th of September when the most recent aid package passed the US House of Representatives largely along party lines for the first time. Only 10 Republicans supported Democrats. An ever-growing portion of the Republican Party have made it clear their general support for Vladimir Putin and his invasion. Russian commentators had made no secret of their hopes of blunting President Joe Biden's hawkish Ukraine policy. Political commentator Vladimir Kornilov on Russia, one state TV show 60 Minutes, the Republicans will have to annihilate Biden.
As Biden's antagonists, they are an easy choice. They'll block the passage of defense budgets. This will benefit us. Whilst the midterms have been going, Russia has appeared more willing to resume peace talks with Ukraine in recent weeks, but observers said this could have been a tactic aimed at influencing U.S. voters who are extremely weary of the effects the war has brought. Russia's ambassador to the U.S. played on this days before the midterms. Our so-called partners continue the erroneous policy, thinking that the problem can be solved on the battlefield, said Anatoly Antonov. Emmanuel Karagiannis, a reader in international security at King's College London, told Al Jazeera, despite the pro-negotiation discourse, the Kremlin has not changed its strategy in Ukraine. On the contrary, the Russian military has targeted the country's energy infrastructure to increase the suffering of civilians. Yet, Moscow is aware that certain elements within both parties in the Congress are increasingly reluctant to support Kiev without any political conditions. Ukraine will never accept a peace where Russia remains on its soil so by ignoring the peace overtures from Putin, they take on the mantle as the bad person, unprepared to sacrifice for the sake of peace. This will play very well for Republican supporters who see Ukraine as an expensive annoyance and not their war. Either way, Dark Histories doesn't believe for a second that Putin wants peace. He is merely saying what he needs to get the US to stop sending money and weapons to Ukraine and that he truly believes that they will lose without it. A solid strategic move to a defensive position. There seems to be a real belief amongst some of the media, commentators, and ex-soldiers and the like that General Surovikin knows what he's doing and is to be trusted. Also, up until now decisions have been taken that appeared emotional, almost desperate as if commanded by Putin rather than the qualified generals who were meant to be directing the war. Those supporting the Russian war effort love a good historical analogy and one that's doing the rounds is that in 1812, General Kutuzov sacrificed Moscow to Napoleon's invading forces to preserve the army. Moscow was lost but Russia still won. There's also the assertion that Kherson is now Russian and will be reclaimed, lest we forget Putin's statement that Kherson is Russian now and forever, yet he gave up on this highly symbolic position very quickly. There is also the obvious point that relocating to the other side of the Dnipro is likely to offer them a major advantage from a defense perspective, and make life hell for those Ukrainians trying to cross an attack. In conclusion, Dark Histories believes this move is purely for good defensive positions and to allow the Russians to regroup and refit, at least in that part of the war theater, I think that the peace posturing will only help, but that it won't stop the Ukrainians from having to make a very difficult and costly assault across the river.